talk about something we all use, we take for granted, yet is ready for disruption. Street addresses. Now, bear with me. Ever since the dawn of humankind, people have needed to talk about places and where things are. You know, where can the berries be found? Where do the buffalo roam? So we can go hunting and feed ourselves. And actually, we're not the only species to do so. Bees communicate by dancing about where the flowers are and where the nectar can be found. <clears throat> so they can send their fellow workers out to get the honey and feed the hive. Even today, one of the most commonly asked questions on the phone is where are you? So you see, we have this innate need to talk about places so we can direct each other there and meet people and have pizza delivered. So that's pretty simple, right? I can say, say hey, I'm talking at Ignite tonight. Come and meet me at 36 Oxford Street and you will find it. Here's the Oxford Arts Factory. So what's the big deal? Well, let's go back a while because addresses as we know them haven't been around forever. In the olden days, buildings were often depicted with a symbol. So you could say, meet me at the Golden Apple or drop this parcel for me at the Blue Jacket and it would work. And it wasn't until cities got bigger in the early 16th century, about 600 years ago, that addresses as we know them now turned, uh, became, came into existence. A place name, a street, some kind of numbering systems. Um, and that's all fine, but when you're outside of a city and there are no streets, you're in trouble. History is littered with incidents of people calling triple zero, urgently needing help, and the operator asking, where's the nearest cross street? And if you live outside the black areas on this map, you do not have street addresses. That's 89% of Australia people. So if you're a boaty, a truckie, a farmer, a tourist, you cannot use addresses to depict where you are. Even in cities, this looks pretty empty. Well, it's not. It's one of the busiest areas in the world. It's the favelas in Sao Paulo. Plenty of streets, but the streets have no name. So good luck. Good luck going online shopping. <laughs> and even here, you know, on the beach, in the park, at the harbour, street addresses are not going to help you describe where you are, where you want your pizza delivered, or where you want the ambulance to go. So we can revert back to what we know. GPS coordinates. Simple, right? Uh, I'm at 33 South, 151 East, and come and find me. Well, that's all very fine if you have a machine talking to a machine, but humans are notoriously bad at handling long strings of numbers. And if you're on the phone ordering an ambulance and you flip two of the digits, you could be 100 kilometers out, which is not a good thing. So, I hope I've convinced you by now. What have people done? So, people are actually trying to come up with a way of more compact coding of these coordinates. Map code is used by TomTom. Uh, plus codes are used by Google Maps. Um, but what I particularly like is this three-word addressing that, um, that is being used. So what they've done is they've taken the surface of the planet and divided it up in three by three meter squares. 57 trillion of them. That's 57 with nine zeros. And every one of those squares, they've allocated a unique three-word combination. <laughs> so table.chair.spoon refers to this particular square on the pavement in front of my house. You're laughing, going to try it out. So that means I can now say, hey, achieving humid wash is where I'll meet you tonight. <laughs> and you can load the app, type the words in, and it'll get you to the Oxford Art Factory. Now that's actually quite useful in places like Flemington, where the Sydney markets are. It's one address, one property, but hundreds of stalls and traders with a front door, loading dock, parking areas. So if you're a visitor, a casual visitor there, or a novice um, forklift driver, how are you going to find your way around? So a friend of mine, Oliver, he listed for all of those the three-word addresses. So those traders can now share those with suppliers, um, customers, so they can, find, can be found and they can do. So, next time you're on a Tinder date, and you want to meet someone somewhere where the streets have no name, consider saying, meet me at Diary Flying Sugar. And who knows, you might get lucky. <laughs>